Uh, we are 15 seconds away from the scheduled lift, liftoff of New Shepard. Jeff Bezos, his younger brother Mark, Wally nine, Funk, and Oliver eight, Davey. Seven, six, five, four. Command engine start. Two, one. Human crew, go, Jeff, go, Mark, go, Wally, go, Oliver. You are going to space. burn on that BE3 engine, liquid Liquid hydrogen, and uh, liquid oxygen as the propellant. It's a nice, not just clean in terms of uh, beautifully performing, but what comes out of it, it's steam, right? Whew. To see the, to see the, 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 the glow of the, of the engine underneath the rocket just under our shoulders and to know that we've got a crew that is going to space. It, it, it just feels different, doesn't it, Gary? It is totally different. We are <laughs> watching history. The first all right, you unpiloted along, suborbital the flight in the bottom with an all-civilian the crew. In the, uh, middle Two minutes the in the air now. There. Tom, at what point do we see that capsule start to so uh, tar- start to separate to from the rocket flight. booster? I think we're at a that'll occur. I think at about the six minute mark, uh, Craig. But I don't have the exact timeline. I All think right, we should just make the point to the viewer who's watching and that the female voice you hear is the voice of uh, Blue Origins Mission Control. This is not NASA. This is not a government entity uh, that is providing us that kind of data straight from NASA. This is, of course, a private company providing us their narration, uh, and so we're very mindful of that. But you're going to get spectacular views here, and you're going to get the engineering expertise, of course, as well. Uh, from, from uh, Blue Origin's own mission control. Unreal. Awaiting separation here. Ron Guerin is also with me, of course, Ron, former NASA astronaut, F-16 fighter pilot. Ron, what's happening right now in, inside that cabin? What are those astronauts feeling? What are they seeing? And here we are. You can start well, with Well, they uh, had that the engine cut off, and so they went from feeling like they were being pushed back in their chair with an elephant sitting on their chest to being weightless. And so I think they're probably getting ready to unstrap. Uh, the whole way up, they saw that view out the window, uh, and they're probably marveling right now at uh, the indescribable beauty of our planet and the thinness of the atmosphere and the curvature of the Earth. And uh, I hope they're having a wonderful time. Ron, there are so few people who have who have seen that view, that view that, that you and other astronauts have enjoyed. Can, can you describe it at all for us? Yeah, I think what I experienced in space the first time I looked out the window was an uh, indescribable feeling of, of gratitude. Gratitude for the opportunity to see the planet from that vantage point and gratitude for the planet that we've been given. And I think and in a way that I, I won't be able to fully explain, being physically detached from the Earth made me feel deeply interconnected and deeply interdependent with everyone on it. I think I saw the true unity of our planet, the true unity of our species, and all those things we fight over and quarrel over, all those things we think are so important, kind of blurred into insignificance in the face of that indescribable beauty. Any moment now, we're told that um, that capsule is is going to separate from the rocket booster. And Mr. Costello, at what point will these civilian astronauts begin to experience that weightlessness? Yeah, they'll they'll get it pretty darn quickly. And I'm trying to listen in to Mission Control as well, because she's our best source on exactly what's happening up there. Um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, we have been waiting for more uh, more details from Blue Origin. Some of that they hold close to the vest. 
So the best description of what's happening. One minute warning. One minute warning. Yeah, I think that's. Let's try to listen into Blue Blue Origin I think we're hearing Mission them right now. Just a bit. Let's try to listen in. Oh, uh, 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 Right, so we are hearing them floating inside the capsule and taking the photographs of each other. Everybody in? First step, guns check. We don't have the video of that just yet, Tom, but what we can do is describe on the, the right side of your screen, you are seeing that that capsule. It has, as you can see there, detached from the rocket booster. That's precisely what's supposed to happen. And in just a few moments, you'll see three parachutes as well. Um, bringing that capsule back to the ground. And when I mentioned, when I mentioned the six minute mark, that I meant to say, that's at about the point that they get back into their seats. I think that's where we are now. We now are. keep in mind, we're gonna probably get shots of the rocket coming back down and the space capsule separately parachuting down that's that's what we're looking at on the right side of the screen that uh, that that rocket booster is descending copy yep that's right you're looking at the rocket booster it'll come back down land on a pad here back down in west texas separately followed by the space capsule which will be under parachutes you, so a phenomenal shot of the rocket booster coming back down on new Shepard. So far, phenomenal flight. Our booster and what you just heard here was a sonic boom there As the rocket comes back life. down to Earth. The sonic boom? My goodness. And the booster has landed. The booster's on the ground, and Tom. Booster, touchdown, welcome back, New Shepard. A beautiful rocket that provided a beautiful flight to space. <laughs> Bullseye, right on the My landing. My goodness, head. stuck the landing. And Tom, that capsule, that capsule should follow here in roughly three minutes, correct? That's exactly right. So, and they will pull those chutes. And as that capsule is coming back down, it'll hit 3.7. Mach 3.7 initially as it comes back down, and then the chutes will come out, and it will eventually slow to 16 miles per hour. And as it comes within about 20 feet of Earth, they will fire some retro rockets that will slow it even further as it has a very soft landing in the West Texas sand. And there is and there are there the is a lot of sand. There are the chutes. All three parachutes. Tom, do stand by for me once again. Uh, we are joined now by uh, Space oh, Royalty. So far, uh, a nominal Mae Jemison is with me, former NASA the astronaut, the first space. woman of color in the space. In 1992, part of that first crew after the Challenger explosion in 86. May the four civilians who are inside that capsule that are about to uh, touch down here on the third rock from the sun. What are they thinking right now? What are they feeling right now? Well, I can't tell you exactly, but if it was me, I would have this big smile on my face and probably wanting to do it all over again. Um, I think what they've done is to see something that is an incredible view and also to have an experience that, you know, we don't often have in life. I was uh, thinking about the excitement with this, it was because the rocket, you know, you get to see all of the things that go on that go on the flight for a short period of time and the adrenaline that goes with it. I think they're just excited uh, and wanting to tell the story when they get back. 
and what a story they will have, a lifetime of stories. May Jemison do stand by as we watch Jeff Bezos, his younger brother Mark, Wally Funk, the oldest woman to ever go into space, and Oliver Damon, all of them (laughs) about to touch down in the West Texas desert. Touchdown. Welcome back. New Shepherds first. Human crew. What? What a Welcome flight. Welcome back to Earth first, Deb. Congratulations to all of you. Oh, what a day. What a day. Mission complete. Mission accomplished. And now we watch it so wait. Was so amazing. It was so amazing. <laughs> Copy first step. You have a very happy Capcom here as well. Let's do a status check. Astronaut Oliver. Copy. Astronaut demo. So demo said, astronaut demo, I am unbelievably good. <laughs> Copy. As- As you get blue controls, Bezos, best day ever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you so funny. Copy, everyone. Go ahead and remain in your seats. Crew member seven is on their way. Shortly, you will hear the capsule off gassing. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Did anybody have to figure out the car? I didn't. Yeah. No, they thought they did. We'll find out. It's okay. I had, um, I, I, my main mission was accomplished. I didn't kick anyone. <laughs> We were listening to Blue Origin Mission Control. You can see Mission Control there. Um, Mr. Costello, it would seem as if it went off without a hitch. Yeah, and I think we heard their excitement in their voices. I think I just heard Wally Funk say she'd been floating for five minutes. Uh, which has just exceeded her expectations. Obviously a great experience. Uh, And I got to think also about this 18-year-old Dutch kid, Oliver, who two weeks ago was between high school and college, and suddenly he's on a rocket going (laughs) to the edge of space. So what a game changer this has been for him. Uh, What they're going to do now is make sure that all safety protocols are followed. They uh, offload any gases, you heard them say, and then they're going to come in very quickly, or are coming in very quickly, I should say, right now, with the uh, ground support team in trucks. Uh, and they will bring these uh, these new astronauts from their spaceship. Yeah. We are re- from their spaceship uh, out towards the staging ground. We are replaying the moment um, just a few moments ago that, that rocket booster taking off. Uh, and, and Tom, the whole thing was actually a few seconds less uh, than, than the 11 minutes uh, we were expecting. We can also tell yeah, folks. So do you, Go ahead, Tom. I was going to say, do you get a refund if you come down 10 minutes and 30 <laughs> seconds instead of 11 minutes into the flight? I don't know. It's a pretty expensive ticket. Um, uh, listen, I, I do think it's also made, worth making a point. The, the, the beauty of this system, and let's, let's celebrate the engineering expertise here. The beauty of this system is it is a reusable rocket. They're going to turn that booster around, that rocket booster around, and the space capsule also will be reused. And we're watching those SUVs. Um, pull up to the capsule here and presumably in just a few moments we are going to see uh, four very happy very excited folks so quickly they start moving even before it landed based on on the prediction of landing um, we use weather balloons that we launched throughout the morning and that that gives us a very good idea of where it will land which within a thousand feet uh, what you're seeing that they're doing um, right now is 
is Kevin Sprogue, crew, crew member seven, is just making sure everybody is okay and gives them a thumbs up. Um, they're also grounding the vehicle. Uh, when you go into space, you could accumulate pretty significant electric charge. That's actually why we prefer that the astronauts not get out themselves so that we can ground the vehicle of static charge, which can be quite strong. Excellent, and I think there that Kevin Sprogue, our crew member seven, has given the, uh, given the thumbs up. Uh, for all of our, our, uh, our astronauts that are on board there, again, Jeff Bezos, Mark Bezos, Wally Funk, and Oliver Damon, what an incredible day. You heard them on the audio, best day ever. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is, I feel like this is our best day ever, and we didn't even get to go up to space. <laughs> I mean, what a day. Again, congratulations I need more. to the entire blue team, our astronaut crew, and of course, the friends and family of these uh, incredible astronauts. They're just about the exit, the capsule here. Let's wait for that moment. There you see Jeff in the window. Oh, there you are. Felix is up here. All right, guys, what we'll do later. Take it. I got a big line in front of the hatch. Table three back. Yeah, the main parachute line in front of the hatch. You're just moving the, one of the main parachute lines to make sure it doesn't snag the hatch when it opens. And there's Jeff. Thumbs up. CC safe, Jimmy. You heard there, the CC is safe. No, I got it. No, I still have to find my life. Confirm. Okay, you can go live. Go to the camera. Jimmy! Jimmy! Gary. The architect of New Shepard. Congratulations to you, man. Congratulations. Give me a hug. Yeah. This is just. Ugh. What, what a day. <laughs> Again, thank you, everybody, for joining us live for our first human flight of New Shepard. Our four astronauts went to space and back, topping over 350,000 feet, well over 100 kilometers. They've come back down safely. We're just waiting here for egress. Our crew is going to get out of the capsule and meet their families back here on the ground. Of course, their families that have provided so much support since they were little kids and dreamt of this to this day and this moment. Let me know when everybody's there. We're doing Mar and Mary. Get in here, Mar. Hi, Kaylin, you ready? Kaylin, we ready? Woo! 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 Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.